professional counselor. Hi, I'm Dr. B, pediatric neuropsychologist. So welcome to Let's, Let's talk. talk. So today we wanted to talk with you guys about different types of providers in the mental health field. One provider that you may hear about is a psychologist. Um, a psychologist is a usually a PhD um, level um, mental health provider, um, or there are also psychologists who are what we call PsyDs. Um, so that's one type of provider, the psychologist. Now you said you're a neuropsychologist. Yes, so I am a neuropsychologist. So a neuropsychologist is also a psychologist, um, but it's, neuropsychology is a specialty. Um, and I will kind of talk about, you know, the types of things that a neuropsychologist um, does in their practice versus a clinical psychologist. And so I'm a licensed professional counselor and I am also um, one of those type of people in the mental health family, as it were, um, along with psychologists, which are amongst the oldest, and social workers are two of the oldest professions in mental health. We also have licensed professional counselors, people like me. Um, we also have social workers, um, master social workers, and clinical social workers. Also, we have a licensed marriage and family therapist, and we cannot forget our medical doctors, the yes. psychiatrists, right? Psychiatrists, yes. And so these different types of providers go through different types of trainings. For example, I mentioned that um, a psychiatrist is a medical doctor. So that means they have to go through um, the same thing that probably your PCP goes through for training as well as the mental health or psychological component including uh, medication. And so um, there's a lot of things that are more medically meant with a psychologist than say with the other mental health professionals. Would you say the same? With the psychiatrist I would say that um, yes there's definitely um, you know the medication is the thing that usually stands out between the psychiatrist and the psychologist. Um, psychiatrists can uh, pr prescribe medications whereas um, psychologists and other mental health professors uh, professionals like counselors do not uh, prescribe medications mm -hmm. um, and that's when we refer to psychiatrists it's usually because we want some type of medication and e evaluation or intervention yeah and so psychologists psych both psychologists and neuropsychologists you guys don't do medication we do not um, mm -hmm. we have knowledge of uh, different medications particularly in neuropsychology and the effect that it has on cognitive functioning but we will always refer to a psychiatrist for um, determining the most appropriate medication intervention. Okay. And so then with the training with um, professional counselors, for example, a professional counselor has to have at least a master's degree in college um, in either uh, psychology, counseling, or um, some sort of mental health field. And with that, after their uh, education, they have to go into the next level, which is called an internship. And so um, here in the state of Texas, woo -woo, um, you have to have at least right now, it may be changing, but right now there's 3,000 hours of postgraduate experience under the direct supervision of a licensed uh, professional counselor supervisor. And the um, social workers and the licensed marriage and family therapists, they have their own um, set of rules that are pretty similar to that but not exactly the same and so if you were wondering about those you can definitely go to their websites and, and check out what the requirements are for training for those specific providers. Yes. Now for psychologists um, or neuropsychologists the training can vary across programs, uh, different graduate programs and as well as the requirements um, across states can vary. But in general, a psychologist or neuropsychologist will attend grad school, graduate school, grad school we say for short, um, and that can range. It can range anywhere from four to six years, and for some people it may take a little bit more time. Um, but generally, we attend a graduate school for some period of time, and that's usually followed by a internship, a year where we mostly focus on clinical practice. Uh, following that year, particularly for neuropsychologists, we do a two-year postdoctoral training. So after our year of internship, um, 
we have two more years of training. Some psychologists, uh, clinical psychologists, also have this two years of training, or they may do one year of training. The overall idea is there's usually graduate school, internship, and some type of postdoctoral training. Yeah. So anyone that you see that's licensed, whether it be a psychologist, a psychiatrist, a manager of family therapist, so on and so forth, do know that they are very well trained. They have to spend a lot of time and a lot of energy and a lot of um, time under supervision. So they're not just out there alone. There's somebody that's um, looking over their work and making sure that they're giving you the best that they can possibly give you. So. Why would you see why would you see a neuropsychologist, Dr. B? Right. Well, a good reason um, to see a neuropsychologist is if there are cognitive concerns. And when I say cognitive concerns, that can mean for children, and I work with children, um, are there concerns about their ability to learn um, information or their ability to show um, optimal academic performance? Um, for adults, it could be questions about um, memory. So someone is struggling to remember um, daily things, or you know, they could there could be medical problems that would result in different cognitive concerns like memory or language skills or your ability to attend to information. And those are the kind of questions that neuropsychologists answer. Are there some cognitive concerns and what can we do to help the child, adolescent, or adult with um, their their cognitive problems. Okay. Um, and how about you? What, what, what type of individual would you see? As a licensed professional counselor, I see all different types of people for a number of different reasons. Um, one of the things that um, I see children, adolescents, adults, couples, families, Pretty much you name it. I don't see pets. I don't see them. Um, but pretty much see everybody else in your house. And it can be for sometimes it's the smallest things um, as simple as just there's some kind of uh, adjustment period that's happening and you're having a difficult time dealing with that adjustment um, all the way up to major diagnostic types of problems like major depression, anxiety, bipolar disorder, ADHD, um, any of those. And so um, it just really kind of runs the gamut um, depending on what what's going on. And so anybody can really benefit from a professional counselor. Um, or good counsel in general because sometimes we have things that are happening in life that we just need um, an ear and somebody with uh, perspective to give us a different perspective than our own um, and so those types of things um, those types of people are people that I see in my office um, families who are going through major adjustment periods maybe there's a marriage maybe there's a divorce um, maybe there's a birth of a new baby and somebody hadn't slept in weeks so you know all those different types of things uh, could be going on for somebody to come and see a professional counselor and I would say that that's pretty similar for clinical um, psychologists as well um, those are some of the same reasons why you would um, seek um, intervention with a clinical psychologist and as we stated before with psychiatrists it typically you're going to seek um, the intervention from a psych psychiatrist when there are um, concerns that there needs to be yeah. a medication intervention mm -hmm. absolutely Absolutely. Well, we're going to take it up to you guys to let us know if we forgot anything or if there's anything that you want to know about um, mental health, about um, what we do, um, where we're located. We're going to give you our contact information in just a bit. But we want to make sure that you like us, share, give us your comments, tell us what you thought about this video. Um, and if there's things that you want to know about, questions that you have, please feel free to let us know because your question could be the next topic of our Let's Talk. Absolutely, I agree with all of that. <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks for joining us Thank today. You. Come back next time and we'll see you.